So with 7TV inch high spy fi we took to the tabletop for grand Bond-like adventures with our teams of heroes against villains in their secret lairs with their master plans for world domination. 7TV Apocalypse, once again taken to the tabletop now in a post-apocalyptic landscape, Mad Max style, road chases, wasteland cities and stuff like that there, mutants all over the show. 7TV Pulp once again carries the banner into TV land, this time bringing us the genre and the world of pulp serials. The old black and whites, 1950s, seen the end of them appear in sort of little shorts before the main feature in a cinema, but that moved on to TV shows. And even in modern day, we can still see some of the sort of things that we learnt about pulp television in shows like Doctor Who or films like The Phantom and stuff like that there. So it's, it's never gone away. We just don't maybe think of it the same way. Maybe we don't always see it presented the same way. But there are still plenty of fans like old shows like Flash Gordon and the Buck Rogers and stuff like that there. This isn't just a reskinning of 7TV. Okay, each time Crooked Dice sit down at the table to bring out a new game, you are getting a new game. You're getting a core mechanic that stays true, so you know if you're a fan of the system, you're going to be in comfortable territory. But each time it gets retuned and rewired to deliver the theme as best as it possibly can. So, I mean, if you've looked at the 7TV Apocalypse, obviously you'll see the big sections and vehicle rules and all in there because that sort of thing is really important to an apocalyptic kind of setting. And with fantasy coming out next year, one of the things we're going to see in that is, of course, magic. And there hasn't been a magic system. And that's a big, that's a big sort of crank in the gears and a big change in things here too. With Pulp, it's all about two-fisted action okay it's sharp fast dramatic uh, adventures and you know what they didn't always make sense they they weren't always the best written stories so 7tv pulp takes that trope and the weird gadgets and all are back in here again not the same gadgets as in spy fi tv this time it's you do you know what let let's just take a look and you'll see what we're talking about, okay? So if you're a fan of 7TV already, you, you, you probably already have this. And that's, that's fine. You can, you can wander off and go and get a cup of tea and do something else. If you know nothing about it, then stick around, take a look. This might sort of tick a few of your boxes and let you know if this is something that you're going to be interested in. So, box game, okay? Stick it off to the side here and we'll get it open and start going through stuff. You always get a pretty busy box when it comes to crooked dice and this one is no exception uh we'll get rid of some of the sort of little bits of ancillary stuff first of all we've got our uh mdf tokens here these are cut by foreground for crooked dice and they've just got a nice sort of little earthy feel we've had acrylic ones and that in the past and fancy ones this seems quite true to the whole idea of uh, pulp cereals nice little uh, wood cut ones and Mm, yes, that that heady aroma of laser cut wood. We have our little bag of gems as always. Track some of those uh, action points and whatnot. We've got our little bag of dice and lurking in there is the MacGuffin. You always get a MacGuffin. And this time round, the MacGuffin quite cutely is, it's like a clapperboard and spools of film reel. So that, that fits the bill very nicely for pulp. Lovely. And of course, we get the one template that does everything. Because <laughs> that's it does, does everything. The only thing you don't get in here is a tape measure. Okay, so there's so always uh, our paperwork for 7TV. And in this case, we have book one book two and book three okay so we'll take a little bit of a gander at these for you again if this is 
a new land what you're going to find okay so easiest thing here actually is uh, just take a little sort of flick through it with you so there's your little director's guide introduction okay in this first volume find out what it takes to be a pulse pounding 7 tv director and just to clarify what, what do they mean by this again if this is new territory for you the idea behind crooked dice's games is the games all represent old tv shows but not real tv shows ip infringement so instead the books and the different games all came up with fictitious tv studios and these books represent kind of like archival material of the old films or old serials that were found by you know guys going through the studio and oh look what we've unearthed and this is the idea that you're sort of you're replaying these tapes uh, or film reels or whatever it happens to be and rediscovering these lost gems of uh, field tv studios or hollywood uh, film studios and things like that here you will be able to direct the action with uh, the core combat rules that explain the basics of how your opponent, uh, how to face your opponent's thrilling battles. Learn about statuses and how to avoid them, and the different types of attacks, trying gadgets, vehicles, all that you can include your cast to ensure your games revel in the pulp era. So, this is the nuts and bolts of the system, okay? And again, if you've played any of the other ones, you're going to be kind of going through this going, yeah, okay, that all makes sense nothing drastically changes there. it's tweaks for for this one okay however the big thing is you're looking at about 44 pages of a rule book which is not massive okay so you get a little bit of an introduction what's 7 tv telling you about the meta game and all the rest of it uh what is pulp because it's frightening a lot of people don't actually sort of twig what pulp is anymore which was amusing because this game was partially well largely actually developed with the edge hill university press a lot of students worked in this we were fortunate enough to meet them at the uh, gamescon over in birmingham and when this one was pitched they were like pulp what's pulp and apparently had to sit down and watch through hours and hours and hours of old serials and stuff like that there and had their eyes opened into a whole new world of television that none of them knew anything about. And of course, some of them went, you wouldn't be allowed to make that nowadays. No, no, you wouldn't. But you've got to make a game about it, but make a game that's fit for the modern era and the modern player. And that's exactly what they said about doing. So, all our various statuses, everyone's explained, and then, as always, this lush little book takes you through everything. And you'll see here, this is not crammed with text. This is all beautifully spaced out. So, 44 pages, and not a whole pile of writing on each page. But the time taken to kind of lay it all out for you, and just sort of take you through it. It's what, it's a crooked dice... Uh, tends to be very good at just sort of bringing, taking you by the hand and leading you through the rule book and going, it's okay, it's all going to be fine. I know rule books are scary, but we're not scary. We're a happy place and we're going to make it a happy place. So this is just pitching for you if, if you're new to it, what the whole pulp thing is about, okay? And then the basics. So it's telling you what's in the box, what you've got, breaks down the card types for you, what else you'll need to play, about the base sizes, typical terms, and the dice rolls. And you know what, by about there, by about there you kind of already, oh, okay, I'm, I'm happy enough. Plot points, how they work there, like currency in the game for uh, getting a lot of stuff done, activating some of your gadgets and things. And then a breakdown on the profile card. Now every game nowadays has like profile cards or stat cards or whatever else, and quite often they're all using kind of the same stuff. Really, it's, you know, can't reinvent the wheel, or you can, but only so many times, or just stick more wheels on it, or less wheels, or whatever. So, your profile card, this basically is four types of character, okay? They're all going to have a picture on them. And the thing that they're not going to hung up on this is that Crooked Dice doesn't care what figure you use. If you want your hero to be this dude, or this girl, or whatever, that's fine. That's the figure you use. 
But you're picking a character type for that person to represent in the TV show on the tabletop. So in this case, this one's Intrepid Adventure. So that, that can be any model, can be your Intrepid Adventure, as long as you know that's your Intrepid Adventure, then everything's cool. And these are the stats that relate to your Intrepid Adventure. This is the one kind of point where some people can go, oh, I don't understand what I'm doing. If you take a character, just one that pretty much everybody's familiar with, Robin Hood, say, okay? We all largely know what Robin Hood is, who he is, what he's about, and all the rest of it. But in a game of 7TV, Robin Hood could be a different number of cards depending on the scenario you're playing. So you might need him to be all kind of charming and stealthy or debonair or whatever, sneaking around a castle, trying not to be caught. Well, that's that's one type of character. Having a big sword fight up and down staircases, swinging on chandeliers, that's another type of character. Breaking into a camp, rescuing Maid Marion, getting back out again, that's a different type of character. Yes, they're all aspects of Robin Hood, but it's not a role-playing game. It's a TV show. So the character card that you're going to take, the profile card you're going to use, is generally selected to kind of relate your character to what you need to be doing them, need them to be doing in this particular scenario. So those aspects of the character come to the fore. That make kind of a bit of sense? Hopefully, because that's, that's as good an explanation as I can give you. Or that I'm just going to bother. You can work it out the rest yourself. Uh, lots of lush pictures as well. Always nice to see the little minis and such. Crooked dice, of course, do a host of miniatures, all of which are wantable. That's the word for today. They're all wantable. Um, but it's not essential for you to have them or use them. You can use your own minis, as you say, but everything else you need, pretty much, bar ruler, is in this box. Fun was the game, explaining cliffhangers. So, you know, everything, it, it, it just couldn't be broken down any more straightforwardly for you than this. And everything's kept in a couple of separate books to kind of keep it that succinct for you and that straightforward. So, rules, how you do things, how you fight, all in here, all encompassed. And there's them bits and statuses, the different sort of things that can happen, being dominated, being on fire. That's never good. Don't burn. And then gadgets, how they work, x-ray guns and stuff like that. There's going to be loads of cool gadgets for this one. Okay. And then fancy shooting, animal attacks, basic fights, basic shoot attacks, little tables to reference things. Vehicles, what they're going to do for you. And this as well, we introduced vehicles, we're saying Apocalypse TV. Now... More vehicles, because you, you can't do pulp without a car chase or, you know, that sort of thing. It's, it's got to be there or flinging a rocket ship or crashing it or something like that there. All part and parcel of the whole thing. That's Tintin-ish. I've only just noticed that. It's class, I love that. Anyway, okay. And there's your quick reference table on the back of that as well. So once you've read that, you kind of have it all in your head about all the, the, the sort of the core mechanics, okay? And how the profiles are going to come together, how all the things work, how the scenes work together, and boom. Because what you're doing is you're spending your points to sort of take control of a scene so that your hero or your uh, sidekicks or your extras can do your actions. So you're vying with your opponent for dominance in a scene, and then you're kind of leaving it with a cliffhanger as you go into the next scene okay and you can steal the scene as well you can do that where you can like play a certain trick and it gets you to you essentially get an orgo but it's got that whole cinematic thing about how that works so book two the producer's guide okay with a zeppelin on the cover so it's obviously awesome So this kind of sets the, the mood and the flavour for you here. So Pinnacle Pictures, Pinnacle Pacific Pictures is the fictitious studio that the pulp era is going to be built around. It's not really relevant. You don't have to get too hung up on this, but it's just to sort of, you know, give it a bit of flavour, a bit of context. Everyone loves that sort of thing, okay? 
Um, so this is looking at some of the sort of shows and a couple of example scenarios for you to work with as well. Until again you get it in your head and you can work on in your own quite happily. So history of the cinema, uh, classic serials, there's three uh, examples given here. And then how to play seven TV and chapters. It, it you know, it, it says what you need to know. It, it's like explaining to my granny how to do stuff that she's taught me. So old posters, so they've invented characters, they've invented shows. When you read them, you kind of instantly start to know the type of thing we're talking about. We're talking, you know, Trails of the Lizardmen's kind of Indiana Jones-ish kind of thing going on with it there. Um, so that takes us through a couple of examples of stories to play with there. Roads to the Stars, it's got a whole sort of Flash Gordon type vibe with it. And again, some chapters to try and play out. Little seeds for what an adventure might want to be, a couple of pretend posters done up. This is the sort of stuff I just lap up. I love all this caper. And then the G-Men versus the Shadow Ring. You know, the Shadow, you know, the Phantom, things like that there. Those old black and white kind of superheroes or secret investigators or vigilante kind of things, detective gumshoe, that sort of job. That's kind of encapsulated in that idea. And again, samples of sort of posters, just to, to help sort of throw the vibe and the flavour into your head as you're reading through it. And there we go. Just This is sort of just talking you through the size of playing areas you need, what type of cast you'll want to have. A cast is your faction, your gang. It'll normally be a hero. Uh, it'll normally be a co-star. And then you'll have a couple extras. Heroes obviously can do more stuff. They'll have better hit points and things like that there. Co-stars, not so great, but still pretty cool. And then extras, you know, people in the background, the soldier with the rifle, the cop with the baton. Simple background characters, but they could be good guys, they could be bad guys, or they can be neutral. And there's ways and means for sort of using them more advantageously and whatnot. Your hero can normally spend actions to activate a number of extras instead of doing something themselves. Just depends what you want to try and accomplish in the scene. And your baddies get to do the same thing, of course. You know, there's a villain and then they've got like their sidekick and they've got their henchmen as well. And their loyal lackeys and minions. There's a wee object token look, there it is. Okay, so that, that runs through those nuts and bolts fairly succinctly for you. And then the last one is looking at characters and casts and stuff like that there. Okay, so this is telling you how you, how, trying to help you how to create a cast, how to use the points, because you'll have values depending on the size of game that you're going to do, the ratings that you're allowed to play with. Um, the different genres there are to work on, what you can do in an open cast, there's open cast and closed cast, so if it's a pre-written scenario it'll normally be kind of telling you who to use and what to do, and then if it's an open one where you're kind of doing your own thing, it's an open cast, you can kind of throw in the crazy stuff that you want. And then this is what I was saying to you about types of characters. So, you know, your costume champion can be whatever model you want doesn't have to be a crooked dice miniature if you've got a character you want to use, say you've got like a batman figure or a captain america figure or whatever if that's the miniature you're wanting to use in tonight's game you look out the profile card that relates to costume champion crusading crime fighter whatever it happens to be um but in another game later on you might decide that whilst you're still using the same model um you need them to be doing something differently so you can pick a different profile card for them and that just runs through them all, neutrals, extras, the villainous side as well. Little summaries of them all. And then little bits where you can customise it, you can fine-tune them, you can spend points and gain points and add points to make them a little bit better. If you just feel that that character isn't quite what you want, you can jiggle with it and do your own thing too. And then special effects, because what show isn't complete without special effects? They get you to do cool things too. Look at that. Class. And then your traits. Otherworldly traits. 
and then profiles by genre, what they fit into. Just a kind of a quick reference table to help you find them. And they're little symbols that all sort of tally up so you can work out casts a little bit quicker once you've got your head around that. They have literally done all they can to help make this as streamlined as possible for you. So then in the box you will get oodles and oodles and oodles of cards. Now I've already opened a couple of packs here but just so that you can sort of get a shot on camera. Okay. All profile cards. Fistfuls of them. Okay. In terms of card content alone it's practically worth the price in its own right. Okay. So that just, that's just to give you a quick impression of, of that as well. So that's so you can sort of think, well, what am I paying for here? This seems quite expensive, £50 or whatever. What am I getting? That's what you're getting. You're getting all those cards, all the books, all your tokens. So those profile cards that we're talking about, there's hosts of them here. Um, I'm not going to run through them all. That makes no sense. Uh, and I think we've brought home the main point is that the cards, card types, you can use whatever models works for you but you'll have a little bit that tells you whether it's like they will listen neutral co-star what traits they've got what profiles they fit into so you know if you're doing open casting it doesn't really matter as much but otherwise it helps you gain narrow them down and then all their special abilities special effects and star qualities the cool things that that profile can do all in the back and every single one of them is like that. Now simple stuff like a neutral security guard you'll normally find there's duplicates of this kind of card because both sides can have them. They, they can have them to control uh, or whatever. Avian warriors, ancient evil, renegade royal, just flatten through a pile of them here. Grave hunter, taskmaster, grease monkey, femme fatale, deckhand, mudican, Otherworldly Guard, VIP, Tribal Warrior, Spy, Scientist, First Mate, Native Bearer, Throw the Cards Everywhere, Gadgeteer, Big Game Hunter, another Gadgeteer, Chief Bearer. So that that's just a quick thing, you know, I've, I've read out like maybe even, not even a dozen of them. There's, there's hundreds there. So then you get unit cards as well. Now I haven't actually opened these ones up as yet. But the idea is here, you can buy squads of certain people and stuff as well. So just to sort of let you see a few of these here. Shock Trooper detail, Tribal Host, Guard detail, Sky Squadron, another Guard detail, Baggage Train, Fighting Wing, Pirate Crew, Baggage Train, because you can have an Alien Force, Cultus Coven, and then we've got some of the vehicle cards here. So we have our motorcycle, and again, what it can do, the abilities and whatnot in the back. Police Patrol Car, Truck, Horse, Police Patrol Wagon, another truck, Coupe. Roadster, rocket sleds, sedans, and there's duplicates of those again so that both parties can have them to hand. And oh, peril cards, sorry, my brain froze up on my. I knew what I was looking at, but I couldn't think of the word, and <laughs> thankfully it's written very tightly up in the corner. So some of the peril cards that can come into play just to make things a bit more dramatic. There's a load of those as well. And those will have like scenery effects and stuff on them as well normally. So our cliffhanger, we should have cliffhanger and gadget cards lurking about in here. Well, in both these packs because they'll probably be a mixed bundle. Because Carl's not very organised that don't tell them I said that. So your cliffhanger cards, these will be done Act 1, Act 2 and then Finale. And they're split into two piles. So depending on the size of game, you'll have a certain number of Act 1, Act 2 Finale cards. Okay. So you'll sort them out 
and you'll make sure you have the right number. And then as the turns go by, you'll be flipping these over and it throws in wee interesting changes. Little sort of moments, they can be advantages, they can be disadvantages, depends whose turn it is. Somebody can sometimes make good use of them or not. Select an opposing extra, this model's knocked down. Just an example of one there. Um, never work with animals until the start of your next turn. All animals in your cast count as part of your opponent's cast. If you have no animals in your cast, gain a point. That allows you something else to spend. Day for night filming weapons may only be fired at half ranges. Stereotype. All stars and co-stars must activate and then use their star qualities this turn and play the plot point cost. If a player lacks the necessary plot points to pay for star quality, an implosion player gains one plot point for each on-played star quality. So those throw little curveballs into the mix and also are the timer for the game. So we've got gadget cards and MacGuffin cards. And again, there's a little bit of a mix in there, so... I'll just divvy those out. Again, not going to rattle through all of these. Um, Thunderdrum, Tome of Desolation, Vibro Resonator, Parachute Cloak, Some Corazin del Diablo. What is models activation? One model within range receives the capture status and has moved into base contact with the model using this gadget. Ooh. Some sort of devilish device, clearly. Disintegrator Ray. Eye of Dark Seeing. Rocket Pack! Radio Watch. 6 to an even. Over and out. Paralyzer Ray. Class. Oh, that's a MacGuffin card. So there's a whole host of those as well. And you can make up more if you need to. And then the MacGuffins. What have we got? Some of the examples of MacGuffins. So Death Ray. The Maltese <laughs> Philosopher's Stone, Priceless Jewel, Red Herring, Secret Peace Treaty, Spear of Longius, Super Soldier Serum, The Holy Grail, Hollow Earth Map, Precious Stone Spyglass of Alexandria, Brain Cylinder. That kind of sums up what you're getting there. And that's it. That's all. That's all the bits. Okay. So everything all the tools you need buy your ruler buy your miniatures you probably use tokens if you really want to but that'd be boring it's not much of a miniatures game if you use tokens um but that's pulp in a nutshell it's it's all there um all you really need to do on top of that is bring your ideas your passion for some pulp tabletop action and all the tools you're going to need are there to make it flow there you go that's it i don't know how long we talk about that we could I, I could wax on quite happily about it but i don't know if we would end up actually telling you anything that you would care about i'd just kind of gush happy joy noises and kind of go "Ooh, it's lovely well it is Ooh, it's lovely that should be all you need just, just be content. That's who you love, like. Um, but at the end of the day, it, in all seriousness, any of these, if if you're into your spy type of thing, look look at it. If you like your post-apocalyptic, look at it. As I say, yes, the core rules are the same, but there's fundamental differences in each one. You could probably bend it a little bit if you really pushed. Um, if you don't like the idea of spending big packets of money, uh, on a box set like this. If you prefer digital, you can go along to the Crooked Dice site. You can get the rule books and that as a digital PDF. You can buy the cards separately. Do recommend the cards. The cards are a big help. They do make life an awful lot easier. And it is nice getting your little tokens and all that stuff. But I can accept a lot of us have all the tokens we need and we have all the dice we need and the MacGuffin sort of thing isn't really everyone's cup of tea. They don't care about it. But the cards are a useful reference. The rule book's obviously quite essential, really. But even the big template, it's a common size template. You know, it's it, they, they Carl and the Crooked Dice guys don't go out of the way to kind of go, oh, here's a thing that you can only use thanks to us. They kind of went, well, here's lots of things that lots of games use. Let's let's stick with those. 
and, and we'll add our own conventions to it, we'll add our own application and our own little tweaks. So the cards and that are there tweak. Thematically, each one is its own thing. So, you know, if, if you've kind of got the love of two or three, um, you maybe don't necessarily need to race out and buy all three box sets. You maybe get one, so you get tokens and dice and things that you want in your template, and then just get the PDFs of the books uh, for the other ones. Or get the little card packs, because they're not very dear. But it's nice and pretty, and people like having pretty things on their bookcase shelf. That's going to sit very nicely on a bookcase shelf, because it looks all pretty, and look, it's all reflective of bits and the writing and stuff. If that doesn't sell it to you, I really don't know what will. Um, but there we go. That's it. Of a Saturday morning, quite often, you will catch up with Carl from Crooked Dice and myself on YouTube having a little yarn, sometimes about games, sometimes not, sometimes about bananas, and occasionally even singing. Um, so do watch out for those two if you feel like joining us. We tend to do it live, so you can even chat a bit, because sometimes we remember to look at the comments and answer them. If you get a chance, give us a wee like down below, give us a wee subscribe, go on, or nip over to Facebook and follow the page, We Gamers and the Bunker Club, because it's like giving us a hug, but you don't have to touch us, but you can touch us if you want, once COVID's over. Thanks for watching, folks, and look forward to hearing from you, seeing you, kind of, again. Until the next time, here's looking at you, kid.